Welcome to Alchemy Wizard. I'm Tom. Today we're going to talk about some improvements I've made to the Plasma Arc process. I know some of you are engaged in the Plasma Arc process. You've gone for it as a way of making your colloidal nanoparticles. And I just want to show some improvements I've made and safety concerns that I've been dealing with. The first thing I've done with with it with my process is I've I've taken my shield if you guys have seen my laser setup I've taken my laser shield and I've lined it inside you'll see this this tape in here I've lined it inside with the magnets I did a video on the magnets which help to uh, stabilize the colloidals and uh, bring a little bit more energy to the colloidal nanoparticles so instead of taping the magnets on the side of my my glass like I was doing, I've I've taped them to the inside of here. And as a side note, another thing that I found the benefit of having the magnets around the plasma arc like this is that the magnets seem to limit the electromagnetic energy that's given off by the plasma arc. I haven't done complete tests on it, but it, it seems like it's at least 60% less that the magnets reflect this energy back away from this direction. So uh, that's quite interesting and uh, we'll have to have more research on that as well. Now, the reason I have this shield is because the plasma arc is quite bright and even with the dark sunglasses and even using I now using welding glasses okay at times to view the arc the arc is still quite bright and really should not stare at it for any longer than we have to. And um, I certainly will not stare at the arc at all these days without having dark sunglasses on and the welding glasses. But how do we monitor the arc when we're doing something like that? Yes, you can hear it, but sometimes that's not always uh, a good way. So what happens is, let me see, this, this shield will go over here like this. And as you can see, it's got an opening on it. And I will energize the uh, plasma arc and then turn the shield this way. Now I can't see the plasma arc anymore. I might be able to hear the plasma arc, but I still can't see the quality of the plasma arc. Especially if I walk away or I go into the, into the other room there to uh, do some work while the plasma arc is going. Uh, I don't know what's going on. So what have I done? I purchased one of these cameras. This camera is one, is one that swivels and tilts and turns and I've put the camera over here and when I turn on my plasma arc I energize this thing and I will watch the plasma arc on my mobile phone and I'll show you a picture of what that looks like it's not the greatest clearest picture in the world because these cameras are made to show entire rooms not close-ups but it does do the job I can take the camera I can go and inside and I can watch the plasma arc and if I see that it has problems I can come over here turn it off turn off the setup and go back to uh, to what I was doing one of the other minor improvements I've made is deals with the eyedroppers on small wires I need eyedroppers in order to precision precision place the, the uh, wires to do the plasma arc and the problem I have is over here where the glass gets thin, a plasma arc fires and heats this glass up and actually eventually this glass will just break apart into a bunch of pieces. And that's a real pain in the neck, A, because you don't want glass pieces in your uh, in your colloidals. That means you have to filter it very, very good, probably with uh, a qualitative filter paper, which takes quite a long time in order to make sure all the glass particles are out of it, or toss the whole batch away. And then you also, I also have to re-drill this little tiny hole that's over here because uh, this hole, without this hole, the water will back up out of the top and go all over the place. With by drilling a little hole here in the uh, in the eyedropper, the water just drains back into inside the beaker, and that's a pain in the neck to drill. So I cover the ends now of these uh, eyedroppers with four millimeter silicone tubing just the ends and this uh, prevents the arc from actually heating up the glass and melting it and it also helps like a little rubber band containing the glass uh, part the the thin glass uh, on the eyedropper ends from splintering 
So far, that's worked out pretty good. Maybe it'll help you guys as well. So that's my update on the Plasma Arc process. I will talk to all of you guys later. I'm Tom, Alchemy Wizard. Have a great day.